Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the APDL Schedule Importer. You can access the importer directly from APDL.net or from the link here on the NC Software main website. If you haven't already logged in, you'll be prompted with a login page. I've already logged in here. So this is the screen I get if I'm already logged in. I'm going to go to the top left to the Schedule Importer menu item and I'm brought to the Schedule Importer page. The top of the list here, or top of the page here, I have my expiration date for my Schedule Importer subscription. Some instructions on how to use the Schedule Importer here along the top. First thing on the list is a filter selection. 99% of users should use the automatic filter, or at least try that first. If everything works out great, if not, there's a long list of filters here you can try to try to narrow it down and make a little bit better result for you. Next thing is uh, choosing what time format your trip data from your company is provided in. In this case, I'm going to use local. That means that the departure and arrival times on the schedules that I'm going to be pasting into the data box down here are local according to each airport in the data or in the trip. UTC, if each airport has UTC times assigned to it for the trip, or a custom selection if all times are in a single time zone, and I can choose a time zone here for that. For this example, I'm going to use local, and I believe most airlines probably use local as well. If you have a file that your data is contained within, you can upload that file here and process your trips that way. I've already copied my trip data from the company website, starting from the pairing number or the trip number and date all the way through the bottom of the trip, through the crew names and the time away from base. If you are missing the top line here with the tear, uh, pairing and trip number, it will not work. And at the bottom, uh, if you don't go far enough down, it also will not work. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. You can paste in multiple trips at once. As you can see here, I have three trips for this example. This is just some sample data for us. I'm going to go ahead and click the Process Trips button. And you get a green success indication here that says we have three trips that were processed successfully. Down here we show what those trips are in a quick summary. Over to the left we have the trip number followed by the start date, the crew information here, details about each trip as far as the number of days and number of legs, and then we have some options over here to change things around. I'm going to use the edit button here on the first trip. I can then change the trip number, the start date, or the crew information. For example, if I'm flying with a pilot whose real name is William, and I know he goes by Bill, I may want to type in Bill here so that I can have Bill imported into my, to my logbook rather than William. And then I can save this and then it will be imported as Bill instead of William. Uh, I could also delete this trip if I needed to, if I accidentally imported it or imported it twice or something like that. Next I can go down here on this little arrow, click that, and this will expand the trip into the number of days in the trip. In this case we have a two day trip, as we can see here shows me the date of each day of the trip, duty on and duty off times for each day, and the hotel information for each overnight. Again, I have an edit button here that I can change the duty on and duty off times as well as the hotel information if I choose to do that, and the save and cancel buttons here. Within the day of the trip, I can expand that again using the arrow here. I can see we have four legs on this day with the flight numbers, whether or not it's a deadhead flight, departure and destinations. In this case, this trip data does not include the aircraft type, the aircraft identification number, or the tail number, or the ship number. Um, I can enter those in if I like using the edit button over to the side here, or I can enter them in within the app itself. Here we have the out and in times. This is separated into source and UTC our schedule importer as well as all of our apps process all time information in UTC only. This avoids time zone confusion and uh, 
math errors. So the source is what we pasted directly in. The UTC is what it was converted to for out and in. If we notice any kind of errors here, we can adjust those prior to importing into the app. And then we have a block and credit column here, credit blank in this case, because it was not in our trip data. I can click edit here, and I can edit any one of these fields just as any of the previous ones, and I can designate as a deadhead if I need to do that. So I can do that for any of the trips that I have imported here. Once they are updated like I like, and they're in this display like this, they are ready to be imported into Logbook Pro or APDL or Logbook Pro on your desktop. As you can see here, we have a little section on guidance on how to import into our different respective apps. Notice at the bottom, when we import to any one of these apps, it is going to clear the trips from our importer portal. And if you want to use multiple uh, apps to import, such as using the Logbook Pro mobile app as well as APDL, you will have to process the trips twice and the import uh, a second time for each subsequent app. At this point, I've finished importing my trip into the Schedule Importer portal. And that completes this video. If you would like to continue on with the rest of the importer process on each individual app, click on the appropriate app icon here to go to that video.